Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, Gorilla Army Nation, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how you doing today, man? I'm awesome, Sauce. What's up, Mr. Nathan Frazier? Oh, not too much, man. I am just chilling over here with a little puppy and uh, babysitting my goddaughter and having some fun doing the podcast with you. Rad. So let's, you know what, let's just jump into it. What are we going to be talking about today? Deal making. The very simple and often way overcomplicated act of making a deal with somebody. So let's talk about why people overcomplicate it before we jump into how to do it correctly. Well, really, there's only a couple of fundamental pieces to making a deal. And even though there's only a couple of fundamental pieces, there's a lot of nuance that can be added, adjusted, removed, that makes people think that it can be complicated the bottom line is, is if you've got the fundamentals nailed, it's really easy to make a deal because you get very, very, very specific with specific people, what exactly it is that they want, when it is that they want it and why they might want it from you. Those are the basics. And yeah, there can be a lot of context in there, but if you've got those things nailed, it's as simple as having a conversation. Okay. I'm going to say, I think you're oversimplifying it because especially before I met you and before I got wrapped into your world, this was one of the hardest things for me to do. I'm great at selling other people's stuff, but when it comes to making a deal for myself to work for other people, I always, uh, I, I, especially towards the very end when it came time to actually close the deal, I would I would start stumbling all over myself. I would make a huge jackass out of myself. So let's kind of go into how to avoid that step by step. You ever heard the term, you got to pay your dues? Yes. Okay. So in getting money, in selling, in getting clients, paying your dues really only means this one thing. Having had enough conversations to where you completely know the who, You completely know the what, you completely know the when, and you completely know the why. And why we stumble over what we're saying, why it's awkward, why it's weird, those are all nuanced things. But you got to have enough conversations to where you can really clarify specifically who it is that you do your thing for, specifically what it is that you can do that they want when it is in their world that it would be the right fit and why they would pick you and how you do it over anybody else. Yes, there's a lot of struggle in this. There's, we, we talked a couple of weeks ago about struggle bunnies and ask holes. Here's, here's the deal. <clears throat> Market research is the foundation to everything in business, period, end of discussion. Mm-hmm. There's just no other way around it. There's two forms of market research, direct and indirect. Indirect is what most of us kind of think we're doing when we think we're doing market research. We go look at what our competitors are doing, we go into Facebook groups, or we go to LinkedIn, or we go to Amazon and read through the reviews, and we're paying attention to what other people are doing. That's indirect information. You're gleaning what people think and what they're saying and how they feel about things. That's excellent, but guess what? You got to actually go have conversations with people and play dumb and play dummy and ask them questions so you can understand really what it is that they want, really what it is that they need. And so you can get very targeted on who the right who for you is. And a lot of people don't do this. And so we go about doing what we do and we try and have a conversation here and we talk to somebody here and we pitch this and we do that and blah, blah, blah. And well, man, I've been doing this for six months and it's like this process is so weird. It's because you don't know who it is that you're trying to sell your thing to and who it should be. You don't know exactly what it is that they want in their own language. 
You don't know really when the right time for your thing is in the world. And you don't know why they would choose you in the way you do it over somebody else. So, and there's a lot of overlap between one-on-one -on -one sales and copywriting. Usually copywriting is just one-on-one -on -one sales in print. Um, but all of these are key points that we have to get down before I start writing a word of copy. These four things plus a, a number of other things I want to know the answers to. And I find that sometimes business owners that I'm working for, they don't even have the answers to these questions. So how do we go about finding out the who, the what, the when, and the why? Let's start off with the who. How do you know who the right market is for what you sell? You got to have conversations with people, right? Here's, here's the whole thing. Let me, let me back all the way back out of all, everything that we've said so far. You need to be 80% clear on the who, 80% clear on the what, 80% clear on the when, 80% clear on the why, before you start getting pretty close to things kind of fitting together and working right. Well, the only way to learn how to do anything is to go do some of the doing and screw it up, hmm. right? So when it, when it comes to the who, well, if you're good at what you do, you should have a fairly decent understanding of who in the marketplace wants and needs that thing. And then it comes down to who it is that you want to work with, right? Do you want to go work with somebody that's really difficult to work with and they gripe and bitch and moan about every $10, right? Or do you want to work with somebody that's totally hands off and really easy to deal with and, and is okay with buying your best quality for your highest price? You get a pick. But the only way to figure out who those people are is have an idea of, of who in the marketplace wants and needs your thing. And then go have conversations with them to determine, oh, it's people like that that I like working with. So what about the what? How do you figure out what the right message is? You mentioned going and, and kind of perusing Facebook messages or Facebook group forums, uh, maybe YouTube videos. How do you go about finding the message that's going to resonate for them? What are the things that you should be looking for? And if you're having conversations, what are some of the things you should be asking or keeping an eye out for in those conversations. Okay. So in the past we, we talked about um, kind of nailing your message and figuring out if somebody has got a broken arm and you're a shoulder expert, right? You're going to have a really hard time selling, fixing people's shoulders when their arms broken, but let's get a little bit more specific. Let's say that somebody's an arm wrestler and their arms broken. They're going to have their own language around, what's broken, why it's broken, how it's broken, how it needs to be fixed than somebody who drives truck, right? The people in the marketplace that you're going to go serve have their own language about it. Whatever it is that you do, there is a benefit. There is a big main benefit, a big ass want that your specific market has. And they've got their own language around that, right? We generally go, hey, I can fix your broken arm. That's the big main problem. But we don't get their attention with the big main problem. And that's what most marketers do, which is why most marketers are just out there yelling through microphones, screaming at the marketplace, solution to big problem, solution to big problem. And it just, it falls on deaf ears. What we need to do is we need to identify the situational or the symptoms that they're dealing with and struggling with to get their attention with. That's the what, that's the message. Okay. And in copywriting, and I, I'm sorry to keep bringing it back to that, but that's the world that I come from. Um, there is something that I use, which is, uh, it's called open. And basically it's, are the person, is the person you're talking to oblivious to the problem? Oh, are they pondering about the problem? That's the P. Are they engaged? They're actively looking for solutions for the problem. That's E. Or are they in need of, a, of the solution right now? And whenever I'm writing, I want to write to those last two, someone who's engaged or someone who needs. Uh, I don't want to sell aspirin to somebody who's never had a headache before. I want to sell aspirin to somebody who's got a migraine because they're going to pay whatever the, the asking price is. When it comes to selling your services in person or, or over the phone making sales calls, um, how do you go about finding out where somebody's at in the engagement and whether or not they're at the point 
where it makes the, the win is correct. It's the right time for you to approach them or, or try and close them. Well, initially, so you've got your message kind of nailed. You need to have conversations with people. I mean, the way I would do it, you and I know each other. So I know where you're at in your business. I have a pretty good outside understanding and viewpoint of what's going on in Nathan's world. Well, I could categorize, I could categorize you and a bunch of other people that are copywriters that kind of are at the level that you're at. And I could understand how much and how bad they value the right kind of clients. So if somebody like you was in the market for getting clients, I already know that. How do I know that? Because you and I've had a lot of conversations and I've talked to a lot of people that are, I would call peer level to you in the specific space of copywriting. I've asked you a million questions. Well, I don't really need to ask everybody a million questions. I need to ask people three or four questions. What is it that you're looking to accomplish? Why are you looking to accomplish that? What have you tried to do to accomplish that? What did you like about that? And what didn't you like about that? Very basic, right? You've ran ads, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you as an example and I'm going to make some assumptions. You've ran ads to get clients. And some of the people that come through that funnel initially are not the right fit because they weren't qualified the right way because you didn't know what questions to ask them. You got a ready, fire, aim. And a lot of people don't do that. They, they ready and they aim and then they fire and it doesn't work right. And they go, this doesn't work. Yeah, no shit. Because you've got to test and adjust, right? And the way we do that when it comes to getting clients is we've got to talk to people that we think might be the right fit. And then we've got to ask them questions. And if we talk to a half a dozen to a dozen people, we can start seeing the patterns. Oh, you want people that are easy to deal with. You want people that need sales pages written. You want to work with people in this industry, this industry, and this industry. Wow, that's really interesting. Out of six people I talked to today, three people all want the same thing. Interesting. I might want to adjust my message to what those three are saying. Okay. Simple as that. And when it comes to the why, figuring out why people should buy from you or figuring out why you in particular are the person that they should go with, um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, we're all a little bit different, right? Most of the people that are listening to our podcast are either coaches or consultants, right? Or maybe service-based providers, service business providers. And we all have our way of doing our thing. And we all think that certain things are more important than other things. Let's use the, let's use the SEO expert as an example. Everybody can kind of conceptually understand that SEO is a long game play to bring in higher and higher and higher quality traffic through basically organic and paid means. Well, if your stance on SEO as an SEO expert is you have to have a well done website that functions properly and all of the foundational pieces need to be in place for what I can do to work, then you probably don't want to work with people that are, uh, we don't care about our website. Just do the SEO thing and, and it'll be fine. Well, if, if that's a requirement that you've got, you want to find people that go, oh my God, that makes total sense. Like, let's set the foundation so it, it's perfect and then let's build on that. Well, all of the people that hear you talk about how important the foundation of your website is for SEO purposes who go, yeah, the website doesn't mean shit. Like, SEO is SEO is SEO and the website's not important. You will repel them. So when you get into a conversation with somebody and you start telling them that, yeah, the website has to be set up a certain way, that way it works right. So I can do my thing and it actually performs and they go, eh, you can go, hmm, red flag. I don't want to work with this person. How you do it and why you do it are second. That's the, that's the next most important thing to who it is that you want to work with. Now, what about, them wanting to work with you. I know that one of the things that you're famous for is the be your weird ass self. Um, how, how can people utilize who they are and what is unique about them to make them 
more attractive to their ideal client? Good question. It's, it's fundamental. And in the last part of your question is actually the reason why it's so important to just be yourself. Selling somebody something is really, really, really easy when we're on the same page. We're kind of like each other. We agree on some of the finer points and some of the more core value issues about life and what it is that we could be doing together, right? If I go work with a, with a plumber to help a plumber get better clients and that plumber is all about Chicago Bears and he absolutely can't stand whatever other football team. Well, when he talks to people that call him up from an ad or from a referral or whatever, and they are that other team fan, like hardcore diehard like he is, automatically there's going to be some issues, most likely. And that's putting it lightly. The reason that we do this is so we can self-select and help other people self-select who we're going to get along with easily. If we're on the same page and we relate on, on the important shit that's not just business and we relate with the important shit that is about business, it's not going to be a sales conversation. It's going to be very simple. And that's what it is that we're looking for. And by we, I mean us consumers on this side of the transaction looking to buy from somebody. We're looking for an easy process with people that we know, like, and trust. How do you build know, like, and trust? By being your damn self. I think it goes back to just kind of human nature. We're tribalistic and we're more likely to trust people that we think are like us. And if you're letting your freak flag fly, other freaks are going to immediately associate with that and be drawn to you and be much more likely to do business with you. Yeah. Your, your potential clients need to get to the point where they basically exclaim these couple of things. I want that. I need that that's for me. And this is who I want it from. If you can help somebody come to those conclusions on their own by being your weird ass self, the fight's already won. They're going to join you. That's how it works. Natural, Absolutely. natural relatability. Absolutely. All right, Landon, before we're out of here, where can people go to check out more of the sales gorilla podcast? Head on over to sales gorilla <laughs> okay, man. Uh, until next time, I will catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Don't forget, I love some of you. I like most of you. There's a few of you I just can't stand, and that's totally okay. <laughs>